Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time you guys are watching this. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop for your latest. We got everything for you to dress outside of the box. Okay, today we're talking about Diddy. Now, word in these YouTube streets, everybody wants to know who's on those tapes. That's a fact. Facts, facts. Information is coming out by the minute. So I have a few things that maybe you guys might have missed. So you guys got to stay tuned for that. Also, I want to let you guys know, uh, thank you so much for the support and the new video you guys have been asking for will be showing Monday. So that will be, you guys won't miss it. I have really some really great conversations we got to lead into. So stay tuned. Love you guys. And if you're not, if you're new to this channel, subscribe to the tribe. You already know. MDC Brooklyn. This is the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn and the side entrance where you can see there is a significant gate uh, held by the U.S. Department of Justice Federal Bureau of Prisons. As we look up at this building, we're not sure which window is Diddy's, but this is where he is being held. And a federal judge has said this is where he's going to stay until he goes to trial. When that will be, we just don't know. His next court appearance will be September 24th. But in the meantime, behind the scenes, we know that he most likely gets a 6 a.m. wake-up call. That's from a former warden who talked to TMZ, who said that he will most likely have to mop his own floors and make his bed. Uh, some of his movements will be restricted because he's in a special housing unit. He's not with the general population right now for obvious reasons. My whole thing is going from a billionaire to a prison cell. That is a crazy gap in between that. That's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Wow. It's for his own security. Uh, this is a detention center that is notorious for violence. In fact, there was an inmate that was killed just this summer and there's been a lot of security issues and it's not just complaints from the inmates it's also complaints from former staffers and there's a lot of watchdog groups who have also noted a list of horrible problems here at this facility but this is where diddy is going to sit until he goes to trial think about that how many months that could be it could be a really long time but if his attorneys have anything to do with it he'll be moved to essex county to a different facility but as we look here behind these gates and up into this concrete mass of a building, we think about how different life is today for Sean Diddy Combs than it was when he was at his Miami mansion, his homes in LA and in New York. We'll have more as the story. I was right in the front row, about 12 feet away from where Combs was sitting. And throughout, I noticed he really kept his focus on the judge at times, looking at his attorney, but it was that moment when the judge said that bail was denied, that he turned around and looked at his three sons who were in that courtroom and, and softly patted his chest. 54-year-old Sean Diddy Combs was led away in handcuffs this afternoon after being denied bail. His attorney blasted the decision. He's a fighter and he's gonna fight this. Combs was charged with sex trafficking, racketeering, and interstate transportation for prostitution following a months-long Homeland Security investigation. Between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires. Prosecutors allege that Combs used his business empire to force women to engage in sexual acts with professional sex workers at events he called freak-offs. It was there that prosecutors say Combs was violent toward the women, alleging he would hit, kicked, threw objects at, and at times dragged victims by their hair. The freak off sometimes lasted days at a time and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB. The charges come after Homeland Security raided Combs' homes in LA and Miami last March. Agents say they seized three AR-15s with defaced serial numbers, ammunition, narcotics, and recordings of some of the sex acts, which prosecutors say he used to manipulate his victims. 
Last November, Combs' former girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, filed a lawsuit alleging Combs raped, physically abused, and sex trafficked her during their 10-year relationship. Combs reached a settlement in that case denying any wrongdoing. But six months later, video surfaced from 2016 showing Combs hitting. And the sad thing about this, it's way, this is, this is just one victim. This almost, they subpoenaed almost 350 people. I guess. Kicking and dragging Ventura by the hair. When you were looking at a racketeering charge, which carries life in prison, when you're looking at sex trafficking charges, this is someone who really may never see the light of day. When arguing bail denial, prosecutors pointed to Jeffrey Epstein and R. Kelly, but Combs' attorney quickly caught, shot back rather, and said you can't compare those cases, Nora, because they involve children who could not consent. Here's a Diddy update. Prosecutors say that Diddy used rent money to try and keep potential witnesses and potential victims on his side and quiet. This was all part of the prosecution's case when they were in court on Tuesday talking about his bail. So there was at least one instance where prosecutors brought up he had asked his people to make sure that a woman's rent was paid on time. The prosecution used the term gaslighting. They talked about a phone call that Diddy allegedly had with a woman, basically telling her that he would continue to financially support her if he remained on his side and making sure she says what they did in the bedroom was consensual. Anyway, Diddy apparently knew that his arrest was coming and his lawyers told him to go to New York and wait to be arrested. Well, prosecutors say that bags of a pink powder were found in the hotel room when he was arrested. Another tidbit, apparently when Cassie dropped her lawsuit, Diddy called and texted her a total of 58 times in a four day period. As for this new indictment, about 50 witnesses have been interviewed so far. So Diddy killed Tupac. And real quick, before we go any further, my definition of freak or freaking off is PG-13 to what hip hop deems this whole freak thing is supposed to be. So Diddy killed Tupac and Biggie Smalls? Am I hearing this right? Prosecutors confirmed that Diddy's name was used 77 times in documentation alleging that Diddy was the one that put the hit out on Tupac. Keefe D, the man who is convicted of and has admitted to killing Tupac, confirms that Diddy offered him a million dollars for the hit. So back in the 90s, Diddy was doing a West Coast tour and hired Keefe D to be his bodyguard. Keefe D says it's at that time that Diddy offered him a million dollars to kill Tupac. And if you're thinking Keefe D just brought this up now because Diddy's already in a heap of shit, you're wrong. Court records indicate this was brought to the prosecutor's attention back in 2009. Now Eminem has stepped it up a notch saying that not only did Diddy kill Tupac, he killed Biggie Smalls too. What? I mean, this is just absolutely crazy at this point. Just for, uh, for us gathering information, social media has, on that part, has won and succeeded in that. I there mean, are so many things about the Diddy wow. case that disturb me to my core, but truly one of the things that just I cannot shake is the fact that throughout Cassie's, virtually her entire career, her entire career that she was with P. Diddy, you can go through Getty images, you can go through old photos, paparazzi photos. In the majority of these photos, Cassie has bruises on her body, bruises on her face that are clearly tried to be covered up with makeup, accessories, clothing, whatever. But the signs of her being abused were always there. And now they're in 4K for everyone to see forevermore the bruises and the cuts that were on her body when she would have to go out and make appearances with him. You can see in this paparazzi photo, you can see a very obvious bruise on her arm. In this photo, if you just look a little closer, it's very obvious that she has a bruise on her face. Another example is this photo. You can see she has an injury on the side of her face. There's a closer look. There's moments where she's like intentionally wearing her hat over one side of her face or her hair over one side of her face. And I wonder if she did that because she was hiding maybe a black eye or her bruises. But you can follow Cassie through her career that's documented well. And she has consistently had 
marks and bruises on her body from years of abuse from P. Diddy. And I know if I went through a bunch of old photos of Kim Porter, I would probably find the same thing. This man is such a monster. Put him under the prison, incinerate him. Okay, so boom, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, brother love, Sean Combs, he's not getting out of jail anytime soon, okay? First and foremost, the judge denied his bail offer and that man put up everything, okay? He was like, look, I give you $50 million. I won't have no cell phone, no internet. The only women that can come visit me is my daughters and my baby mamas. I'll hire my own security. I'll sell my plane so you don't think I'm a flight risk. Matter of fact, I just bought my house so I could put my house up for collateral just so I could get out of jail to fight my case. And the judge said, no, actually, because we don't feel like you won't be intimidating the witnesses and we got to keep these people safe because not you called that lady 50 something times right before we came and picked you up. And then all of a sudden she putting out a very well written, very well written and almost sound like a lawyer helped her put that together statement on the internet. And we just, we not fooling with it. So now you finna sit in jail. And so now he is sitting in a federal jail in New York. And one thing about the Southern District of New York, when they on your head, they on your head and they know they got their case ready to go. So that's what it is. And he not in trouble for fluing people out and being freaky. That's not illegal. The problem is them people think that you were forcing people to come do that stuff and you were using violence and intimidation to do it in addition to you were using your business and the power and influence you gained through your business to make all this happen and so now they can't tell the difference between your crimes and your business and so that's where the rico came from a liquid iv an iv that you need to hook up who is administering these ivs like oh my god what were they doing what did diddy have this, these people doing you mean to tell me that after these freak offs, they were literally getting hooked up to an IV to replenish their body and rehydrate their cells after all the fluids that they lost doing these acts? Like what? I just don't understand. My brain cannot conceptualize. What is it that they would be having to do in these situations to where you would need a, a, like a literal medical like who was administering these ID, IVs? They had medical professionals doing IVs for the girlies. This is too much. Diddy, you're not going to jail. You're going to prison, babe. <laughs> Wrap it up. It has been wrapped. Like get this man out of here. He needs to go underneath the jail. Well. Well, did he start snitching? He better. But the only thing I'm interested in him talking about is everything he knows about Kathy Coriana White. See, I know you know what happened to Corey. Did he? I know that. You and Jay-Z down in Vegas in Tao with Claudia. Why don't you just talk about Kathy? That might help. That might help a lot. Kathy Coriana White, Jay-Z's pregnant mistress, who died 24 hours after she announced that she was going public. What? With their relationship and the baby. While he was married to be sick. Was Jack. it an aneurysm, Diddy? Or are you the one who paid the same coroner that you... What? Mm. <laughs> oh, Diddy, you should talk. Do you feel the federal government will probably speak to Jay-Z in regards? They already have. Oh. Oh. They talked to him before he made that Super Bowl announcement. Isn't that interesting? He was questioned by the feds before he made the Super Bowl announcement. Blink twice. <laughs>
Oh, this about to get fun for me. So what are your thoughts on all the celebrity, his celebrity friends that denounced uh, those allegations and were like, this is false and, you know, Liars. they were saying, yeah, should they cut, should they speak Liars. up now? Should they speak up now? I think it's getting a little too late for those who are complicit. For the people that have been denying it, you know what, Let, let's not be coy. You know, I am Jaguar. So let, let's just keep it a buck. Let's keep it a bean. That's a fact. Facts, facts. Stevie J should be charged. Mary J. Blige should also be charged. Jennifer Lopez should definitely be charged. <laughs> Jay-Z should be charged. Khaled should be charged. Rick Roth should be charged. <laughs> Usher should be charged and tried with him. Off of Justin Bieber alone. It's genius. So just like they had a surviving R. Kelly series, I think that they're gonna have to have a surviving P. Diddy because everything that's coming out about him, you know that there has to be a lot of victims. One of them being Justin Bieber because Justin Bieber's representatives have said that Justin Bieber's in a really dark place and he's really just shutting down, which I think is so sad, especially because he just had a baby. This is supposed to be one of the happiest times of his life. He should be just enjoying fatherhood. But instead, because of everything that's going on with P. Diddy and obviously at a very young age, he was linked to P. Diddy. It's just a lot for him to handle and I'm wondering like what happened to him during that time. Another person I often think about is yes, J-Lo because she did date P. Diddy for a little bit, but Aaliyah because she was also linked to not only P. Diddy, but also R. Kelly. And obviously she had an untimely death, which a video for another day, a lot of people think that that might have been not what it seemed is the best way I can describe it right now. But because she was so young, being around R. Kelly, we know how that went. And all the conspiracies that was around their relationship and now being linked to P. Diddy as well, of course, like they're all in the industry at that time. You know, she must've went through some stuff too. And then it also begs the question, people in a circle like Jay-Z, like what were they doing too, right? And with him and Biggie being so big, this might be like my cold case criminal miny mind because I watch too much of that stuff. But I wonder like, what if Biggie wasn't, down with that and that led to his death because he was going to expose PDD and somehow I listen I'm just I watch too many of those shows I know there's no facts around this I'm just thinking out loud but it's a truly sad story and did I'm gonna keep this shit 1000 dog I know you're trying to get a bond but they ain't gonna give you now so it's really just a waste of a lot of money but you go ahead and put your put your card in there you know they might I doubt it if I was you, I worry about, you know, right now, just realizing, man, it's going to be a long ride. Go ahead and go back to the, you know, go back to the, um, to the building, MDC. Go and start ordering canteen, order you some books, order your Street Elements magazine. And, you know, they can talk with your lawyers. But at the end of the day, dog. Go ahead and get you about 240 months, man. Like I said in the beginning, man. If you get you 240 months, anything under that is a blessing, though. You know? It's a long ride, man. You got to you want to just sit down for a minute. Get your little routine going on. Start doing some push-up, dips, and burpees. You know? Um, you know, get 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 used to waking up early, you know, about six to seven o'clock in the morning. Door pop open. You know what I'm saying? Gotta go ahead and get used to that dog, cause they ain't gonna let you out, man. They ain't gonna let you out. The only way you're gonna get out, boy, you gotta tell on the whole world, boy. And you, you know, that's the only way it's gonna happen, dog. For real. I I know I didn't you can been with J Lo. You can been with Carissa. Come here. You've been with all kind of women. But you also done been with some men too. Oh, you mother... <laughs> okay. All right. I'm putting cases on all you bitch. Huh? You think you can do this shit? Damn it! You think you can do this to me? You motherfuckers will be playing basketball in Pelican Bay when I get finished with you. 
What can I tell you? One man's selfishness could be thousands and thousands of other people's trauma. It is crazy, this whole Diddy situation. It's like an ongoing story of just new details of how somebody could be such a monster and labeled as a mogul. My goodness. You guys let me know what you think down below. Leave your comments down below. I love all you guys. All my new subscribers, we're going to have a lot of different conversations coming up this week. So you guys stay tuned for the new stuff and um, just stay tuned, man. It's crazy out there. I just can't believe it right now. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.